In this episode, we're going to be taking a closer look at mail armour. Now, mail armour is sometimes called chainmail armour, although the word mail is actually Old French for chain, so calling it chainmail armour is actually just calling it chain chain armour. Now that that's out of the way, let's take a closer look at how mail armour was made. As you can see, mail armour is made of interlinking metal rings. These are joined in one of two ways, either butted or riveted. Butted mail is made by interlinking the rings and then simply squeezing them closed again. It's not particularly strong, but it is very quick and simple to make and doesn't involve much effort at all. The more expensive style of mail was called riveted mail, which was made by overlapping the ends of the mail link, hammering them flat, piercing a hole through the overlapped ends, and then inserting a rivet through the hole and finally squeezing it shut. Then you would have one strong link. That's a lot of work when you consider that a male shirt is made of up to 40,000 individual links. It flowed similar to fabric, which meant that it didn't restrict the wearer's movements, and if it ever did get damaged, it could simply be stitched together by adding more male links. Being made of so many metal links did have a downside though, with the average male shirt weighing around 13 kilos. This meant that fighting in male armour required soldiers to be incredibly fit, otherwise they would get exhausted far too quickly, and soldiers that are too tired to fight aren't very good soldiers at all. <sighs> It provides great levels of protection against cuts and slashes, as it's very difficult for metal to cut through metal. It was pretty effective at stopping arrows too. During the Crusades, Saracens recorded how attacking knights would be bristling with arrows, and yet would still keep attacking. Eventually, long, thin arrowheads were designed to slip through the gaps in the chainmail armour and injure the soldier that was wearing it. People also realised that because of the fabric-like nature of mail, it didn't stop things from being crushed. So if you were wearing mail armour and facing someone armed with a hammer, it was probably time to surrender. Soldiers would typically wear padded armour underneath their mail to help reduce the impact of incoming attacks, increasing their chances of survival on the battlefield. So, in conclusion, male armour is made of thousands and thousands of interlocking metal links and comes in two distinct types. Butted mail, which is weaker but much, much quicker to manufacture, and riveted mail, which takes a lot longer to produce, therefore making it more expensive, but also making it significantly stronger. Male armour isn't restrictive and is particularly protective against things like slashes, and cuts and some types of arrows, but it doesn't fare quite as well against crushing weapons like hammers and clubs, and also long, thin, penetrating weapons like specifically designed types of arrowhead. Mail armour was a fantastic choice of protection on the battlefields of the early Middle Ages. However, as weapon design began to evolve to defeat soldiers wearing mail armour, it was soon time for a new style of armour to be invented.